India's DRDO announced plans to transfer its 30kW MK2A laser weapon system technology to private firms following successful field tests on April 13, 2025, in Andhra Pradesh. Developed by DRDO's chess lab in Hyderabad, the system neutralized drones and surveillance targets at up to 5 kilometers. The move supports India's self-reliance in defense and aims to scale production to meet army demand. Mounted on mobile platforms, the laser system combines six 5-kilowatt beams for high-precision strikes. The initiative builds on earlier collaborations with BL and reflects growing defense private sector integration amid rising drone threats. India's artillery strength is set to grow with Larsen and Tubro preparing to deliver 100 more K9 Vajra T howitzers, starting late rupees 7628.7 crore deal finalized in December 2024. Adapted from South Korea's K9 Thunder, these self-propelled guns had proven effective during the 2020 standoff with China in Ladakh. Production at LNT's Hajira facility will include increased indigenous content, supporting the Atmanurba Bard initiative. The howitzers offer high mobility, precision and rapid-fire capability. This order, extending through 2028, aligns with India's long-term artillery modernization and further strengthens the LNT, Hanwha Defense Collaboration. The Punjab police dismantled a Babur Khalsa International module, backed by Pakistan's ISI, arresting six operatives after a shootout linked to a failed grenade attack in Batala. The module, directed by foreign handlers Maninder Billa, of Portugal, and Munnu Agwan, operated under BKI mastermind Harwinder Singh Rinda. Simultaneously, the NIA raided 15 Punjab locations tied to BKI-linked suspects involved in the 2023 Gurdaspur police station attack. Investigations revealed a transnational terror plot to fund, arm, and train recruits in India. One arrested operative, Jetan Kumar, was injured during police action and hospitalized. In response to Turkey backing Pakistan during a conflict with India, Indian citizens and institutions have launched a strong boycott campaign affecting Turkish trade, education, tourism, and aviation sectors. Without a formal government directive, major Indian retailers, including Flipkart and Reliance, delisted Turkish products, causing an estimated rupees 2,000 crore impact. Key universities like JNU and Jamia Millia Islamia cancelled academic MOUs with Turkish institutions citing national security. Travel to Turkey has plummeted. Visa applications dropped 42%, and Turkish airlines saw declining passengers and suspended bookings. Tourism platforms like Make My Trip and Clear Trip reported a 60% drop in Turkey-bound bookings. Businesses in Udaipur and Pune have stopped importing Turkish marble and apples. This widespread public response sends a clear message. India stands united against any nation supporting terrorism. Turkey's support for Pakistan has cost it deeply in the Indian market and hearts. Twelve days after suspending the retreat ceremony at Atari and other Punjab frontier posts due to security concerns following Operation Sindor, the Border Security Force announced it will resume the event on May 21 for the public. A media-only ceremony is scheduled for May 20. The decision to scale down the ceremony on May 8 came after India launched Operation Sindor in retaliation for the Pahalgam terror attack, destroying nine terrorist bases. Although the ceremony resumes, BSF personnel will not shake hands with Pakistan Rangers, and gates will remain closed during the flag-lowering ritual. India's Defence Procurement Board recently cleared a Rs 40,000 crore proposal for six indigenously built mine countermeasure vessels, or MCMVs, to secure naval and commercial ports during wartime. The proposal now awaits Defence Acquisition Council approval, led by the Defence Minister. Simultaneously, the Navy has initiated plans for 13,000-ton new-generation destroyers, nearly twice the size of existing Kolkata-class ships, featuring enhanced weapon density and over 80% indigenous components. Additionally, the Navy is exploring uncrewed systems and submarine-based weaponry, with further approvals expected by year-end as part of India's strategic maritime expansion.
India's artillery exports have come under scrutiny after reports emerged in 2024 suggesting Indian-made 155mm shells were indirectly routed to Ukraine via European intermediaries, despite India's neutrality in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Tensions escalated following the April 22, 2025 terrorist attack in Kashmir, which led to India's Operation Sindor and severe retaliation from Pakistan. Amid this, Indian officials criticized European media for pro-Pakistan bias and overlooking cross-border terrorism links. Russia also raised concerns over arms diversions. The controversy has sparked debate in India over revising export policies, especially toward nations seen as disregarding India's security challenges. In early 2025, an unexploded Chinese-manufactured PL-15E, beyond visual range air-to-air -air missile, was discovered intact in Hoshiarpur, Punjab, following recent India-Pakistan hostilities. Believed to have been launched by Pakistan Air Force J-10C or JF-17 Block 3 jets, during a failed strike on Indian Air Force positions, the missile's critical components, such as its propulsion system, ASA radar seeker, datalink and guidance unit, were found largely undamaged. This rare find has drawn intense international interest. The Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance including US, UK, Canada, Australia and New Zealand, then Japan, France and most recently Taiwan, have reportedly requested access to the missile's technical data. Analysts believe the missile malfunctioned or was neutralized by Indian electronic warfare systems. Developed by China's AVIC, the PL-15E is capable of speeds exceeding Mach 5 and ranges up to 145 kilometers with advanced ECCM and real-time targeting features. Strategic players view this as an opportunity to study China's cutting-edge air combat technology. For countries like the US and Japan, the missile holds valuable insights for countering Chinese air power, especially in the Indo-Pacific. France seeks to enhance Rafale systems, while Taiwan sees it as crucial to bolstering its defenses amid growing tensions with Beijing. In a sharp response to growing provocations from neighboring nations, India has adopted an assertive stance, notably against Bangladesh. Tensions escalated after Bangladesh's interim advisor, Mohammad Yunus, suggested bypassing India's northeast and aligning with China for trade access. In retaliation, India scrapped a key 2020 transshipment agreement that Bangladesh heavily relied upon for its garment exports via Indian ports, impacting nearly $770 million in trade. India's decisive move, accelerating the Caledon Multimodal Transit Transport Project, which connects Kolkata to Mizoram through Myanmar, bypassing Bangladesh entirely. This strategic corridor reduces dependence on Bangladesh for northeast connectivity and enhances India's logistical self-reliance. Bangladesh, now feeling isolated and economically vulnerable, faces major setbacks in its garment export sector, its economic backbone. India's countermeasures signal a clear message. Any attempts to undermine its territorial or strategic interests will be met with firm economic and infrastructural recalibration. Russia's United Aircraft Corporation, UAC, recently marked a significant milestone in military aviation with a successful test flight of its upgraded Su-57M stealth fighter, featuring AI integration. Veteran test pilot Sergei Bogdan commanded the flight, during which the AI system autonomously handled key operations such as navigation, target selection, and flight controls, although the aircraft was not entirely unmanned. This development positioned Russia among a select group of nations advancing AI-driven combat aircraft technology. The introduction of AI in the Su-57M is expected to enhance decision-making speed and reduce pilot workload, especially during high-stress combat missions. Defense analysts have highlighted that such AI capabilities could soon redefine modern air warfare by enabling real-time threat response and adaptive mission execution with limited human input. This technological leap holds strategic relevance for India, which operates over 270 Russian-origin Su-30 MKI jets and has long-standing defense ties with Moscow. Since the 1996 agreement that led to license production of the Su-30 MKI by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, India has built a robust partnership around the Sukhoi platform. Experts believe this foundation could pave the way for India's collaboration in next-generation AI-enhanced fighter programs.
that's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.